welcome to UNB Lighting Lens. Today I have with me Her Excellency Ambassador Cecil Blecken, who is representing Norway, which is famed for its mountain spectacle of feud coastlines. Ambassador Cecil Blecken, welcome to UNB Lighting Lens. Thank you. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, you have arrived in Bangladesh back in October 2016 to represent your uh, country, Norway, which we see as uh, one of the uh, peaceful countries in the world. So this is your third year, if we recall correctly, right? That's right. So uh, how do you describe Bangladesh I and mean, what's your impression about Bangladesh? I think Bangladesh is a very interesting country. I've learned a lot being here and people are very hospitable and welcoming. So it's been a very pleasant time in those three years. You have traveled outside Dhaka. Uh, you have visited uh, the Shundarbans and the mighty river Padma and uh, rivers outside Dhaka, the Turag River uh, in particular. So would you kindly describe uh, your experience while uh, traveling outside Dhaka? Because the rivers, I think, are the lifeline of Bangladesh and it's the real pleasure. It's what I enjoy the most, I think, uh, traveling is to travel on the rivers. It's so much more peaceful and calm compared to, uh, to Dhaka and it's always green and uh, lots of birds and everything. So I really enjoy that. How do you describe Bangladeshi rivers compared to other rivers across the world? Because your rivers are mighty, you know, I don't think there is anything like, you know, the Padma River, which is uh, such a huge river. Norwegian rivers are much smaller and uh, and calmer, I think, because there is also, you know, quite some current. But it's, uh, so it's quite impressive. And when you see, when you get down also to the Sundarbans, this, the, the, the rather, big rivers, not as big as, as the Palma, but uh, then all the small creeks as well. So you have this variety of rivers, which is also you know, quite quite interesting. We understand that there are uh, interlinked challenge of uh, biodiversity loss and climate change. And uh, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called on uh, global leaders to come to New York uh, with their concrete and realistic plans. What role uh, Bangladesh being the most vulnerable country uh, in the world can expect uh, from the global leadership? I mean, uh, being vulnerable mm -hmm. due to climate change. Yeah, I think one of the things that Bangladesh can do is, of course, to highlight the effects and the challenges and how this will uh, have an effect on, on the country, but also to give very good examples about how Bangladesh has been able to adapt already to, to the climate change. So I think you are a world leader also in adaptation to climate change. So having a dialogue on mitigation and adaptation and the roles and responsibilities of various countries, I think is quite important. How do you describe the uh, impact on Bangladesh uh, due to climate change? I mean, what can happen? Because Bangladesh is unfortunately, I think, vulnerable from two different sources. Because you are vulnerable because the increase in temperature will make the sea level rise. And Bangladesh being such a flat country as well, will be unfortunately, you know, seriously affected by that. There are estimates, I think, about up to between 15 and 30 million people might have to move because of that, because also the water gets more saline, it's more difficult to, to, to grow crops. On the other hand, Bangladesh is also vulnerable to what we unfortunately see to a larger extent than what we were expecting, the melting of the ice in the Himalayas, which will change the life of your rivers. I would like to uh, know another thing, which is uh, Norway's ambassador, uh, Muna Zul, has uh, recently been elected um, as the president of the uh, United Nations Economic, Com Economic and Social Council. So is there any plan from your side uh, to work together with Bangladesh to uh, promote collective action to achieve the sustainable development goals? Very much so. And we are very pleased that Bangladesh is also a member of the ECOSOC. And we would like to work together with a number of countries because sustainable development goals are of course common goals and it's a common responsibility for all the countries in the world. So we very much look forward to working also with Bangladesh on that. Uh, that's really good. We, uh, we are uh, hopeful. So uh, what's your priority in uh, remaining days uh, before your completion of uh, four-year tenure uh, to deepening the bilateral ties between Norway and Bangladesh? Uh, there are a number of priorities, I think, and one of them is, of course, the business climate. Because investments and foreign investment is quite important for Bangladesh to keep up the economic growth. 
Uh, and unfortunately, there are a number of challenges. Uh, Norwegian companies trying to establish themselves here find that bureaucracy and red tape is uh, is hampering because it's such a time-consuming process. And also for companies that are already established, there are a number of challenges when you know framework conditions are changing, rules and regulations are changing. So. I hope to be able to work with Bangladesh authorities on improving the investment climate. That is one. Another one that's linked to the rivers and that's about pollution and plastic pollution. Because Norway has launched a huge program globally uh, on combating plastic and uh, littering. Uh, and because Ganges, Padma, is among the 10 rivers in the world that discharges the largest amount of plastic into the, into the ocean. So we are working, or we hope to work with the Ministry of Environment and also with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, on a program on reducing marine plastic littering in Bangladesh. You have already mentioned, uh, and I believe that both Bangladesh and Norway are uh, oceanic nations, so uh, we do care about the health and the cleanliness of uh, ocean. So uh, what cooperation do can we expect from Norway? Uh, in, uh, in this respect? Because as I already mentioned, we have this program and we will look for other opportunities as well to see if there are other areas where we can cooperate when it comes to reducing pollution. We also like to cooperate more on Bangladesh when it comes to management of the fishery resources. Norway has a top modern fishery research vessel which last year visited Bangladesh and hopefully it will come back to Bangladesh again in a year or two to make assessment of the fishery stocks, but also on the level of pollution and the state of the art of, of the oceans. So we hope to continue to cooperate on that as well. Uh, referring to that, I would like to know, uh, do you have any suggestions uh, on how we can better manage our uh, water bodies and rivers? I think combating con uh, pollution is the most important and because then it also is necessary to cooperate with the industries. When I just recently were out on a river cruise and we were uh, passing Savar and the area where you know the tanneries have been uh, installed and you could you know you can see on the river you can smell that there is still a lot of things that needs to be done when it comes to cleaning of, 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 of the discharged water so having treatment plants for particularly for the industry and because that is a responsibility which is not only the government but it's the industry's responsibilities yes, as well. Uh, we are developing treatment plants yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's of course extremely important. Then because there is also pollution coming from households as well as from the agriculture. So to have a plan and I must admit I have not studied the Delta plan. I don't know if that and about the sort of the the cleanliness of the water bodies is part of that. But I think that is an important area that the, because it's challenging, but it need to you know need to start to work on that. Bangladesh is uh, giving much importance on uh, exploring maritime resources. So, uh, is there any way through uh, which Norway can help Bangladesh to take uh, advantage of its maritime resources? Yeah, of course, as I discussed, we're looking at, about uh, cooperation on uh, on fisheries resources, uh, and of course, when you have an assessment of the stock, you can also have a policy. We hope to be able to cooperate with Bangladesh on the regulations of combating illegal, unreported, unregulated fisheries, because you know overfishing is a challenge as well. You need to manage the resources in a sustainable manner. Yeah, thank you for your suggestions and uh, I would like to move on to another topic that is uh, our RNG sector. Uh, I believe that you have noticed uh, impressive progress in this industry. But uh, I'm concerned about the fact that uh, why the price, the price is not increasing compared to the uh, improvement we have so, uh, so far achieved. So uh, what would you say in the, uh, about that? I would say, and I think I have the current president of the BGMA with me, that, that you need, your factories need to be better negotiators. Because this is, because uh, there are two parties in this the, that are deciding the price. It's the buyers and it's the sellers. And to be able to, and if Bangladeshi com companies and garment factories are, you know, someone are offering a lower price, buyers would go there. So. To be better negotiators, I think that is one thing. And then I agree that also the buyers should recognize all the investments that has been done. And I know that there are campaigns among consumers in Europe as well about this. 
uh, that we are buying too many cheap clothes and that we should rather, you know, buy a little bit less but pay more. And I think that would be benefit the environment as well as it would benefit the garment workers. No, I think this is actually for the industry and the, the commercial parts too. I don't think governments can really have they much... They cannot have any impact uh, for, uh, to accelerate that process? I think that's difficult because, you know, governments do not set prices, at least in our country. It, it do not. I think in Bangladesh there are certain items where maybe the government would fix a price. In Norway, government never, would never fix a price and government would never tell. Because what, what governments can do is, of course, and that is actually discussed in Norway, having legal measures about the ethics, which means that you need to make sure that when you buy products from wherever you buy it from, you know that it's produced in an ethical way. And then, of course, uh, labor, that's, labor that's conditions. What we are yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is that's actually a work going on in Norway on that. I would like to know another uh, thing that is uh, very much important for our country right now. That is, uh, Norway is strongly committed to um, its role over the Rohingya issue. And I would like to know, mm. we have the fact is that we have seen media reports that uh, the repatriation of Rohingya will begin in this month or uh, before the UN uh, General Assembly. I want to know, do you uh, see any likelihood uh, for the start of repatriation of Rohingyas? I would like to say that yes, I do, but I'm afraid I do not really, because I think there is there is at least three parties in this, and it's because the Myanmar authorities and it's the Bangladesh authorities, but it's also the Rohingyas themselves. And based on what I've seen and heard, also from the latest discussion with the Myanmar authorities, the Rohingyas, no, they really want to go back, but they do not want to go back before they are feeling safe and before the Myanmar government can guarantee, or international community can guarantee, that they will be safe. So I think it's optimistic to think that this it will go on the change within such a short time. What we all have to do is to work together to make sure that things are improving on the Myanmar side. And I'm working very closely also with the Norwegian Embassy in Yangon so that we have, you know, share experiences and, and views and can have the same message also to the Myanmar authorities. That's great, you are uh, closely working. Uh, but uh, what do you think? Uh, what role uh, Norway can play to expedite the repatriation process to ease the burden of Bangladesh? Mm. I think the role we can play is to be part of the international community's dialogue with Myanmar authorities, to be part of what's taking place in the UN, to support the solutions and try to bring, and also to have dialogue with a number of other countries in the region that maybe have a larger influence. So I'm going to Norway in next end of next week and we'll have our annual ambassadors meeting. And then I've agreed with my colleague from Yangon that we will gather together the ambassadors from the neighboring countries in the region and the ASEAN countries to discuss the Rohingya issues and see what we can do together also in the countries uh, in, in the countries in the region. You have already passed uh, three years, uh, about to cross our uh, three year. And uh, I'd like to know what impressed you most uh, in Bangladesh so far? I think what has impressed me most is the warmth and welcoming attitude of the people. I think that is, uh, and of course, what has also impressed me very much is to ha when you have a long term perspective about the development to see how, you know, poverty reduction, that how much Bangladesh has actually achieved since independence when it comes to economic growth, poverty reduction, pop reduced population growth. What I would like to see more is even more women in... in, in, in yeah. Of course, a lot has happened there as well, but there's still a long way to go for women to be, you know, playing an equal role as men. So do you have uh, any message for uh, our Bangladeshi women who uh, wants to see themselves empowered? I think trust your abilities, use your use your power, use your abilities, and be active. Another thing uh, that I would like to know uh, and that is, you have been uh, working for a long time, and uh, many of uh, our viewers who wants to work like you as an ambassador, uh, do you have a message for them how they can develop develop themselves to become uh, an ambassador or uh, working for the foreign policy? I think what's important is that you think what is important to me, how do I want to contribute, what can I do to contribute to the world being a better world and then look for opportunities. I think the important thing is not to think I want to be an ambassador, but 
I want to change things and then you follow that and passion. if you do that pa with passion you would be successful. Uh, that's uh, really uh, inspiring. Uh, we have uh, learned a lot of things from you. It was really nice to talk to you and uh, we are honored that you have given us time. Thank you for joining our Light and Lens program. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you for watching Light and Lens. We will come up with another episode soon. Till then, stay connected with the United Kingdom of Bangladesh.